An outsider can be forgiven for seeing the rich variety of wildlife as Africa's greatest heritage. African wildlife, with its overwhelming grandeur and abundance, may truly be the continent's most striking feature. The rich and diverse landscape provides for bountiful game. But by judging Africa by its game alone, one runs the risk of ignoring a vibrant and proud human culture. Tribes in South Africa were courageous warriors with unmatched strength. Warriors were honored for their heroism. One of the most important groups in South African history was the Zulu, whose great chief Shaka united the Zulu kingdom. Shaka used armed bands of warriors known as Impi to accomplish his goals. So it may be only natural when looking for a name for a dog with exceptional courage and loyalty that Impi would spring to mind. This Impi is a Jack Russell Terrier whose sense in the wilds of Africa is second to none. He sleeps in my room next to my bed. He travels in the vehicle with me. He's my best buddy. But he's a tool. And he is as important as this rifle is here. That dog is to me. Because that dog has the ability, he has proven it time and time again, to save my life and the clients around my life in a dangerous situation. Professional hunter Gerald Conway operates nomad safaris in KwaZulu Natal province, the traditional heart of Impi country, 80 miles from the east coast of South Africa. Good morning. Good morning. It is a good morning, huh? Wonderful day today. Yeah. The sun's shining and we've got beautiful weather. Uh, what we're going to do this morning is we're just going to go up in the valley at the back here. Right. Um, we've got sun shining into the valley. It was cold for the last couple of days. We had a bit of bad weather. So what will end up happening is the animals will start moving, wanting to come out into the warmth of the sun. Mm -hmm. So we're going to head up on the valley ridge and we'll be able to glass down into the valley and look for animals that will be moving out into the sunlight this morning. Perfect. Perfect. Wonderful. Impy's coming with us? Impy's coming with us. All right. Boys, you're up. a little bit cold, but yeah. we'll warm up soon. Okay. Up. Conway owns and manages the land he hunts on. With 50,000 acres overlooking the Umkampozi River, the area teems with a diversity of game and habitat. For both Impey and Conway, hunting was nothing they needed to learn. I was born with the instinct to hunt. It's part of my upbringing. It's part of my soul. I really, the most special thing about what I do and what my professional hunters do is we get to be part of people's dreams on a daily basis. We are part of each individual person who comes out here to Africa to hunt with us. People that have dreamt to come to Africa for many years, we are part of making that dream come true. MP is part of the hunting team. He goes everywhere in the hunting field with us. He's so in tune with, with everything that's going on and with me. He will never, ever blow a stalk. He knows exactly where to walk, how to walk, when to sit, when to lie down, without me actually having to tell him to do that as such. This is Mountain Reedbuck well, territory, this. They're uh, well named. Yeah, mountain, there we go, aptly named. Mountain Reedbuck. Um, you usually, usually find them, they like lying amongst the rocks on these steep mountain sides and below the cliffs. And this is just perfect mountain reedbuck habitat and there's a good chance that if we keep traversing this this ridge line here we'll be able to spot a mountain reedbuck lying on a little bit of a ledge below us somewhere. For centuries the Zulu people were the most feared intense tribe in southern Africa and their warriors were called impis. This is a story about a hunter named Impi. I can't even recall how many animals, wounded animals, Impi has found that there was a good chance we would have never found. From plains game animals to dangerous game animals to bush pigs that kill dogs with ease. We went for five years, a five year period where we never lost a single wounded animal. He would trail that animal, he would attack the animal and he would get the animal to come to bay. The animal would stand and fight with him. Its attentions are focused on Impy. We can walk in 20 yards from the animal and put a shot, a finishing shot into that animal walk slowly along the edge and somewhere along the line we're going to find ourselves a mountain reed buck. Okay, let's do it. A perfect example, hunting with MP and the value of MP 
was the first hunt of this year. We hunted a buffalo that was a killer buffalo. It had killed a local, killed three horses. It had killed a couple of buffalo calves already. The landowner had called me and, and, and mentioned that he really needed this buffalo to be shot. And, you know, I don't like to go into a very dangerous situation. It's one thing if you if you wound a buffalo and you now have to, to, to sort the situation out. The client decided it was what he wanted to do. We drove the vehicle to the edge to look down. When the buffalo saw the vehicle, a couple of the bulls immediately turned. They were going from right to left and they immediately turned and started coming up the hill. I'd said to the client, if we're going to kill this buffalo, it's going to be on foot, not from a vehicle and not from a high vantage point. We're going to do it on foot the way it should be done. When the bull saw us on foot, this is the killer bull, it came running past the bull in the front and I, I had a good feeling that would happen. I realized there were other buffalo behind that bull and we couldn't take a frontal shot. I, I pulled the client to the side so we could get a slight quartering shot into the front of the shoulder. This is a 75 year old man. I have to give him all the credit. He made a beautiful shot. He hit it on the front of the shoulder. The buffalo jumps up and goes down the embankment on the side with Impy now chasing it. He attacks the buffalo and the buffalo turns to fight with Impy and the client shoots another shot. Boom! And he hits it in the opposite shoulder. When the shot hit the buffalo, the buffalo came up the hill like this and it came right across the front of us. And as it came across the front of us, the client shot a third shot. These buffalo were now coming and the situation was really dangerous. I mean, MP at that point in time saw these buffalo coming and he left the buffalo that had been shot and he, he just flew in there at these charging buffalo. He, he attacked them, got on in amongst them and they were fighting and one of the buffalo managed to hook MP and he came squealing out of there and he ran towards me and he brought, brought the buffalo with him. The buffalo were now chasing Impy and they saw me and I shouted and I said, Impy, go get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. And the, he turned around and he charged back in after being hit by one of those buffalo and he attacked the buffalo again and he stopped the buffalo again. At that point in time, I knew I'd given the other guys enough time to get to the vehicle. I turned around, I ran to the vehicle, I jumped on the vehicle and the vehicle backed up out of there and Impy obviously heard the vehicle going and he turned and he came and he ran off the vehicle and he saved the day for us. <laughs> Yeah, that ram doesn't look bad. I mean, he's, it's a long way off and, you know, he's amongst the rocks. It's a bit tough to see, but from here, it looks like it's worthwhile trying to get a closer look at that, that animal. Hunting in this area reminds me of so many different kinds of mountain hunts, the sheep hunts, the ibex hunts, where you're up on rocks. You're climbing literally and stepping from rock to rock. There's very little flat ground or even hillside you're walking on because you're in the mountains. It's almost rocky type mountains. And yet there's ledges and cliffs and, and trees growing out the sides of these ledges. And you, I mean, there's eagles that fly by you. <laughs> you're up with the eagles. You're up at the highest mountain tops and you're hunting for mountain reef. That's a crowned eagle. It's the most powerful eagle in Africa. It doesn't have the widest wingspan, but it has the deepest wing. It'll take um, young impala, it'll take um, a lot of the young, youngsters that are born, it'll, it'll take those that their favorite food to hunt as monkeys. This is one of the most unique areas you'll ever find in South Africa. Starting from, from, from the habitat and the terrain, you have mountains, high mountains with open grasslands at the top, and then you have these, these cliff edges where you can find Klipsbringer and where you can look down and find mountain reedbuck on, on, on the mountain sides. A client coming to hunt here with us will have as unique an experience as you would have anywhere in Africa. I can see him. I can see him right here. Look at the tree that's sticking up. Look at the base well, of the tree. We, got him. Okay. we can try and sneak down here again. And go down to the edge and see what what's going on um, where the animals are laid up where the ram is well i just feel that if we go to where that tree is we're 30 yards from it this is just like a you know classic sheep hunt we're gonna have to go belly crawl slowly absolutely and just move inch up and, and look and class and class and class and make sure you know we see all five and we know which one absolutely. that we want to take Make the effort and go back up here. Go around and come down from the 
that side because the problem is I think they were fairly spread out and the ram was on the far side of the group when they lay down so we need to be able to come in from his side without having all the other miles looking at us. Okay. Hunting in Zululand with Gerald Conway of Nomad Safaris is a classic example of hunting the way hunting should be, the way hunting has been for centuries. The real challenge for any hunter is to decide how do you get closer. You look at, of course, the wind, you look at the terrain, and in this case, we had to go the opposite direction. To use the mountainside, we had to traverse back away from the animal and into a ravine. Once we did that, we had to cross a mountain face, but there was no cover along the mountain face other than just the rocks and the natural curvature of the mountain itself. So you find as you try to get close enough to see and really find, get yourself into that position to shoot that you're exposing yourself. So the only thing that you can do in that situation is to lay down and crawl. Like Gerald taught me something really valuable in this particular hunt that I forget. And that is when you're crawling close proximity, 30, 40 yards away, the noise of two people crawling at the same time could be enough to blow the stock. So while he told me, I'll crawl, then stop, then you crawl, we were making less noise because of the combination of sound. All right, Mark, raise up. He's, he's the only one in view. He's the only one in view. He's, he's lying there, right to left. Take him when you're ready. There we go, he's down. Yeah. Awesome, got him. Thanks. <laughs> oh, what a hunt. Unbelievable hunt. As I shot and the red buck went down, Impy intercepted. Had that red buck been able to, or uh, managed to move off, Impy would have been right there with him the whole way. He'd never gotten to a point where we would not have known where he was because Impy was right there hunting with us. Impy, did you get him for us, boy? Hey, did you get him? This, when you talk about a mountain reed buck, they call it a mountain reed buck for obvious reasons. And you know, there are places you find mountain reed bucks that are in, in the low areas, but if, the, if they've got mountains like this, mm -hmm. you'll be sure to find them in the mountains. They're so agile in these mountains. They, they can move across these mountains like, like the mountains are nothing. And uh, us human beings are left in their dust. You know, Safari Club has the record book of trophy animals. Really judging what's a mature animal for a given place at a given time, how does this rank as a trophy in that sense? Well, we, we like to shoot book animals. We call them book animals. Um, this, is, this in the book would be a gold medal uh, mountain reed buck, which is a, which is a really nice mountain reed buck. Uh, Thank you hunt, so man. much. I appreciate everything. <laughs> awesome hunt. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. Must say. Safari Club International has become a very important part of my hunting operation. Uh, affiliation with them uh, in today's time is, is paramount. Um, they have the conventions where we have booths, where I get a booth every year. But a lot more than that, most of the hunters that come and hunt with me are Safari Club people. When you're a member of Safari Club International and you go to a local fundraiser or dinner or the annual hunters convention in Reno, you're going to meet many hunters, professional hunters and outfitters from the Republic of South Africa. And there are so many opportunities to hunt with them here in this country. And to just walk behind those trees there. If, we, if they can walk behind the trees, we're going to be able to do a 70 yard dash to where we'll get back in this draw and we'll be low enough all the way through to intercept them. And just there's one tree there that'll give us cover. If they walk through that behind that tree, we'll be able to just make this little dash without them seeing us. And it seems they walk, walk moving in that direction at the moment to end up behind that tree. I know there are, there are professional hunters in Africa that have dogs and I'm sure they would all say exactly what I'm saying. Uh, that they would have the same kinds of stories to tell, but you know, there's not a lot of them. I've, I, I've traveled around Africa and I've hunted in a lot of different hunting camps and you know, I very seldom do find professional hunters with dogs like this and you know I just wish a few more people out there realized that you know if you're a dog lover you've got a best buddy with you but not only that you have an animal that has the ability to, to
take a bad situation and turn it into a good situation to where a wounded animal is killed, where a dangerous animal is brought to bay. Jack Russell Terriers are bred with the instinct to hunt. They're all together on the left hand side, yeah. right? Yeah, that's that second one from the left, the closest to us. Okay, I don't have a shot yet because he's got something right behind him. When you look at a red hearted beast and you look closely at his face and the configuration of his horns and, and the, the, the animal, the species that he is, some have said that he is so ugly that he's beautiful. He is certainly strange. There is nothing like a hearted beast anywhere. A hearted beast may look awkward, but it can run at speeds of almost 50 miles an hour. A large bull hartebeest can weigh up to 450 pounds. He's still facing away. There's but he's an, straight away. Yeah, yeah. As soon as he clears, once he turns to the right and he walks... But an outstanding example of what a red hartebeest is, what a red hartebeest can be, and how it is to hunt an open plains game with Gerald and Impey. Uh, there he is. He's in the clear. Now he's stopping. He's there he goes. There it is. Take the shot. Good shot, that, that got him, he's down, well nice. done. Perfect, what a shot. Look, I didn't realize that Impy was already there. It's a small dog, and it just doesn't look at first glance like he could be that fierce, that he could go charging after a red hartebeest, much less a buffalo. But I found when I did hunt the red hartebeest that he has no fear whatsoever. That is what I'd call a hell of a hartebeest. <laughs> <laughs> what makes him so good? Is it something that you look for in mass and height, uh, the horn configuration? Because he's definitely different than the others. I go by gut feel. I look at it and it's either a wow harder beast or it's an okay harder beast. And we try to obviously shoot the wow harder beast. But what actually makes this harder beast what it is? Look at these tips. I mean, that thing's got almost 10 inch 10 tips inches. from there to there. So he's got a nice bell giving it a beautiful heart. He's got nice and big bases. I just went that's a good heart of beast. Wow. And look at him. I mean, we're, he's on the ground and he's fantastic. Well, the wow factor for me on a hunt like this is watching Impy the dog get there almost before the bullet did. You told me he could do that. Yeah. Amazing dog. I mean, he knows the program, doesn't he? He certainly uh, knows the program. It's been an absolute privilege for me to have had a friend like Impy and a, a hunting buddy and a hunting partner like Impy. And, you know, I know he, he is getting old now and we, we're going to look at getting a new young Jack Russell to start replacing him, but I owe my life to this dog many a time. And it's, going to be, it's going to be sad when he's not hunting with me anymore.